Hello and welcome to this very special webcast courtesy of the European Institute of Health and Sustainable Development, EIHSD, about finding Europe-wide solutions to healthcare. Health is on fundamental value for humanity. Determinants of health, including properly staffed health systems, are a big issue for Europe and the globe. Most nations committed themselves to the universal health coverage, patient-centered approach, community-based treatment, leaving no one behind. Achievements of all these noble goals is impossible without all appropriate healthcare workforce. So first, first element of background is the fact that migration to OECD country and more generally globally has been increasing in the past decades. Uh, the total number of immigrants in the OECD increased by almost 50% in the past 15 years. Uh, the number of uh, tertiary educated migrants in the OECD increased by 90%, almost double in the past uh, 15 years from 19 million to 35 million. But at the same time, uh, uh, looking at uh, education policy, we also see a large increase in medical students intake and graduates in many uh, OECD and EU countries. As you can see, um, about a fourth of all doctors are foreign born in the OECD and about a sixth of all nurses. And third observation from these graphs is that the number of a share of foreign born is uh, higher than the share of foreign trained, meaning that uh, some people get training in the destination country, which could be linked to two, two uh, different set of uh, uh, issues. One is that uh, country of destination are actually contributing to the training of health workers. But second possibility, which happens in many cases, unfortunately, is that people initially train in their country of origin have actually to retrain because their qualifications are not recognized at destination. And globally, uh, this is a global issue. Overseas development assistance and technical assistance need to be reinforced to help less advanced countries to build up a sufficient health workforce and strengthen their health system. Uh, and, and mitigate the factors that are pushing health uh, professionals to leave. You can also bring this last point in the European context and think about uh, improve the system to improve the fairness and the solidarity mechanism the Commissioner was just talking about in order to balance indeed these two objectives, which are free movement. There is no question about trying to limit migration, but also ensuring equal access to healthcare to all. What are our diagnostic tools to um, uh, to to diagnose this uh, the shortage, and how should we go forward uh, to get better and not contradicting figures about health workforce shortage? It's absolutely uh, necessary to integrate health accounts or labor accounts in the system of health accounts. There you can see on the right side Germany with the highest figure of national of, of employment in healthcare in European 27. But the main problem is we have still in Germany a workforce shortage. Health la uh, labor shortages are measured regularly by the public employment service. And you can see um, in this study from the labor offices who reported shortages, you find a lot of countries which are on the top of countries with high uh, employment ratios. Now, a complete contradicting uh, uh, build is given by the global burden of the siege approach. In this approach, health workforce shortage does not show any shortage for many European countries. We are still in the beginning of understanding uh, what is really behind that and um, uh, need to go forward with this uh, 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 practical empirical uh, uh, research and, and, and accounting. Uh, forecast for 2020, 2030, developed by OECD or Eurostat or Department of Statistics shows the, the population of Lithuania. Uh, if 
this forecast uh, will be correct. So quite likely the demand of healthcare labor force in Central and Eastern European country, because Lithuania is just an example, will decrease. And in this case, outflow of medical personnel may be not a brain drain, but a factor reducing brain waste caused by unemployment in uh, the source countries. So this is one uh, scenario of the development, but maybe we can look for more optimistic options. For example, when you're looking to Lithuanian figures on net migration, that means emigration minus uh, immigration, you see that it's true that in 2010 was big outflow, 80,000 of people lost to Lithuania, but it is a reduction by years. And since 19, we have already uh, blue those columns and a positive net migration to Lithuania. And here, uh, based on this assumption that convergence may change uh, migration patterns, uh, two different forecasts. The slow already shown uh, Department of Statistics forecast, which indicates that emigration or net negative migration will continue. This is a, a, a forecast uh, done by Health Economic Center, by uh, commissioned by Lithuanian Ministry of Health, but the average of those two estimates also is quite positive. If so, uh, quite likely we will have uh, much bigger healthcare expenditures. Again, with combination of those two forecasts, a stronger demand for health labor workforce, and that's why probably different outlook for migration of doctors from Lithuania as well as other countries. Well, and now for conclusions. Countries of New Europe may gradually transform themselves from donors to recipients of workforce from third countries. Motive of this West migration in between EU countries from search for higher salary abroad may converge with those common to Western Europe. And the last question, should we talk about old and new Europe 15 years after the enlargement? So in the context of uh, health workforce reforms, medical deserts are characterized by falling number of medical practitioners, inadequate composition of healthcare professionals teams to serve the local population's needs, and little or no access to digital technologies that could actually support healthcare provision. Because most medical desert, let's face it, they are not just isolated and depopulated areas devoid of medical services, they often also lack uh, uh, access to other essential public services, such as education facilities, public transportation, there's often um, underinvestment in economic activity, so there's high unemployment, greater economic vulnerability. We're not going to criticize individuals, uh, uh, migrant health workers, for their wish and their desire to move abroad. But we need to recognize as a union that this mobility, when it is excessive and when it is skewed, it has an unintended and unwanted consequences. So the health labor market is not a free market in the purely economic sense, and we, we really have to abandon the idea, uh, that idea and treat it differently. COVID shows that, that we need to, to think how it is important once again to, to, to find mechanisms which can strengthen our solidarity. Healthcare workforce, uh, uh, you know, shortages on the ground require much more efforts uh, to, 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 to develop more complex multi-level mechanisms, but also keeping in mind solidarity and social uh, fairness and, and e equality. Without those e mechanisms, we have no chance to uh, encourage people to believe into social uh, into European uh, Union project because the health is very close to people's hearts. And here we can move forward uh, with, with our debate uh, and thinking about pan-European solutions.